Hello, sentient beings and shavelings and all ships at sea. Remember, we, the Angel City Zen Center, are doing a fall retreat, which will be available to all of you all on Zoom. And the information for how to join that is right there. And you can also join all of our events on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and probably other days that I don't know, also online. So it never been easier. Now. Yesterday, I spoke online on the Zoom thing at the Angel City Zen Center about uh, time and the nature of time, which was a kind of a repeat or maybe possibly a refinement of the talk that I gave at the Houston Zen Center. But one of the things I ended up talking about both at the Houston Zen Center and last night at Angel City Zen Center was something that I didn't actually have on the list. So let's see if we can talk about that. It was sort of it was brought up uh, by two of the people who asked questions last night but the question I remember best was the second one which is what do we need to know in order to do zazen and the answer is not much I will leave the instructions that Dave Cuomo and all the nice folks at Angel City Zen Center made for uh, how to do zazen it's a nice little video that's uh, Few minutes, like three minutes long, I think, and there's also a 45 second version that we show at the beginning of each uh, sitting that we do online. It's really, really simple. You don't need to know much. I find that in my work, I end up talking a lot and obviously writing a lot, and so I say a lot of things, and some of the things come from books which are seen as being extremely intellectual and extremely difficult. Dogen in particular. Dogen even apologizes in one of his pieces of writing. I think it comes up in uh, Ehei Koroku or somewhere, one of these things, not in Shobo Genzo, for being so flowery. He says, every time I put a pen to paper, everything comes out really flowery, and he seems kind of apologetic about that. Dogen was a highly educated person, and really only highly educated people in his day were writers. So, you know, you didn't, you didn't have this sort of egalitarian school of writers, you know, people were just farmers and writers and whatever. So it's very, it's, it's very intellectual, but the core message of it is not that hard, <laughs> you know, and that, that's the, the difficulty with it. It, uh, it seems hard because you, uh, you meaning me and all of us, have learned a particular way of understanding ourselves and the world we live in. And it is shared in common by, I would say, most of the people in the world uh, have it. And these days, the most common worldview is based on materialism. It's a materialistic worldview that takes matter as the most important or most significant aspect of everything and says that everything derives from matter. So even even your, your thinking or your experience of the world derives from the fact that you are a material being and everything else, you know, your, your your experiences and all that are just sort of a byproduct of material interactions and it doesn't, you know, it's nothing. Well, Buddhism comes from a completely other point of view, which, which says that matter is, is, is one aspect of the world, mind is another aspect of the world, and ultimately mind and matter are actually the same thing. So your experience of the computer and the computer are the same thing, which is a difficult concept because you've been taught that they're they're eternally different. You know, you, you, you've been taught to just imbibe this belief of the eternal difference between your internal experience and the external world. Well, Dogen and Buddha and Bodhidharma and Dining Katagiri and <laughs> Kosho Uchiyama and uh, Kobenchino Otagawa, all these people in the Zen stream and Nisargadatta Maharaj and Ramesh Balsakar in the Advaita Vedanta stream and there's all kinds of people are, are taking a completely different view and there's always a tension between those views but as a, as a person growing up in the 20th and 21st centuries we have all imbibed the material view deeply very deeply to the point where we think of it as being obvious when it's actually not that obvious that's one part of the problem the other reason for all this talk is well, it relates to a story that I'll tell you, and I've probably told it before on this video channel. 
which is that back in you know the 90s when I was studying with Nishijima Roshi and trying to be a writer Nishijima Roshi kept encouraging me to write about Buddhism and I would say why <laughs> why write about Buddhism and he would say it's really important uh, to write about Buddhism and I'd say well what should I write about Buddhism and he'd say write about Buddhist philosophy and I'd go well, why? Why write about Buddhist philosophy? And he said, because people like explanations. And I know I've said this on the video channel before, but I'm saying it again. Part of our nature as human beings is to want to explain things and want things to be explained to us. Whether that explanation is perfect or not is, is hardly relevant. In fact, no explanation is ever perfect. And it's just, it's fine. Incomplete explanations are perfectly good. Dogen has a line about this that I actually happened to read when I was talking for the Houston Zen Center, and it says, even a moment of half perfectly realized existence time is the perfect realization of half existence time. Even those phases in which we seem to be blundering heedlessly are also existence. So everything is existence time. He also says in Bendoa something like, if a fish tried to completely perfectly realize the water before he swam he would never swim and if a bird tried to completely perfectly realize air before she flew she would never fly that's the the way we take this so the the understanding is always a bit murky that's something that Coben Chino brought up in a quote. I think I might have talked about that on this channel already, but if I haven't, I'm going to go back and maybe I'll talk about it next time. But he says this really beautiful quotation I found recently in which he says that, that the understanding is always misty. You're never, you're never going to come to a complete understanding of everything, and that's just fine. That's part of what we are saying, and it's part of the reason that Zen is phrased in the way it is. The, it's sometimes phrased in a kind of baffling way because it's trying to tell you that, look, these words, they don't matter ultimately, but people like explanations. So people like to feel that they have at least some grounding in a, a theoretical reasoning for doing what they do, which is, you know, kind of helpful for Zazen practice. When we do Zazen at the Angel City Zen Center, what, what we do normally is we have people sit for half an hour, either once, one half an hour period, or sometimes or on Saturdays we do two half an hour periods, and then we have a talk. Now, Sometimes these talks are given very highfalutin names like a Dharma talk or a Taisho or something, but I prefer to think of it as just kind of a little reward that you get after doing Zazen. So it's like, you know, if you go to the doctor's office and after the doctor gives you a shot, you know, when you're a kid, he gives you a lollipop. That, this is the lollipop, is, is what we're giving you after Zazen. And sometimes it gets very theoretical and historical, and I try to get people to talk who have interesting things to say, you know, so you won't just feel like you wasted your time. But learning it and imbibing it and memorizing it I mean, there's no there's no quiz afterwards <laughs> so you're not going to be asked to explain your zazen afterwards although you might end up like me making kind of a career out of explaining your zazen all of the books about buddhism are a footnote to zazen i think koto sawaki said that i'm not sure if it was him or someone else but somebody said that and that's true people do zazen and then they write about it. Dogen did that. You know, he wrote the huge, giant Shobo Genzo just about his experiences in Zazen, basically. And it, it, it's not necessary to memorize it or understand it. Even you just kind of, it's just kind of there to help out. It's you know, kind of props things up because people like explanations. So there you go. If you like more explanations, what a transition! You can send me a donation at the address you're seeing on your screen below. Uh, that is how I make most of my living, especially these days. And it really, really helps that a lot of you are contributing, even if you're contributing very small amounts. That's great. If you're having financial difficulty, don't contribute to me because it's not desperate here, but your contributions are what keep me going, and so I thank you very much for those. Have a good time all the time. See you later.